But then we get down to his miracles. His miracles. You know, when you read the miracles in the New Testament, you don't get the idea that they are like a magician pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Jesus never did miracles to entertain the crowd. The miracles always taught something. And when you read the accounts in the, of the miracles, the people's reaction is real. It's just like we were there. Let me give you an example. Now, today we had uh, down here in Florida uh, six to ten feet uh, in waves out there in the surf. Okay? That's, that's pretty good waves out there. I heard the fellows on our staff went down to the beach and they looked at the waves, and I mean, they were coming in. I've been in Hawaii where they had the waves up to 20 feet tall coming through when you've had hurricanes and so on, and I've seen those. You don't go swimming in a 20-foot wave, do you? Why? Because if you're going up while this wave is coming and it comes over you, you can have 20 feet of water pushing you right straight down into the gravel and grinding you up down there. It gets pretty hard to uh, come up. And then while you're coming up, then the other wave's coming over right behind that. Remember the account, Matthew, Mark, Luke, all three of them record the account of Jesus and the disciples on the Sea of Galilee. And uh, Jesus uh, is tired, so he goes and rests in the bottom of the ship. And they are sailing across the Sea of Galilee, and the wind comes down off the Golan Heights, and you can have some real waves coming up. In fact, the way the account is written, Peter thought they were going to die. He thought they were going to die. They were bailing for all their worth. You ever been in a small boat when the waves are filling it up and the wind is blowing like mad and you're losing and you only got these little cans and you're trying to bail out? Well, you know you're in big trouble. You know you're in big trouble. Nothing's going to help you and pretty soon you're going to be down and then you're going to be swimming out there in the waves and you don't do a lot of swimming. So Peter, a fisherman, seeing what the score was, got scared, said, where's Jesus? James says, he's out, sacked out, down at the bottom of the boat. What? Tell him, wake him up, get a bucket, let's go, we're going down. So Peter goes running down to Jesus. This is a marginal reading of the Ankerberg translation here, as you understand. <laughs> Peter goes down, and he says, Jesus, get up. Jesus wakes up, says, what's the matter? He says, the wind, the waves, we're, it's coming into the boat. We're going down. Grab a bucket. So Jesus comes on up to the top. He looks, these huge waves rolling by. Remember Hawaii 5 -0? Those of you guys are real old. Remember those waves you used to have on Hawaii 5 -0? See one of those waves coming at you. Peter says, you see that? It's coming toward us. We're going down. Do something. What does Jesus say? Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah, right, Jesus. This wave is coming, you see? So Jesus turns and he looks at the wave, looks at the wind, looks at the elements, and he says, peace, be still. I can just see Peter looking at James. Did you see that? I mean, now that's going to really help us out here. Peace, be still. I mean, and while he's saying that, the wind drops off. And as the wind drops off, the waves start to smooth out. And pretty soon, all of a sudden, it's just quiet, and the water is just lapping up against the boat. And Peter and James and the other disciples are absolutely drenched, standing there with their buckets in their hand, looking around. And what I like about all three of the accounts, what Peter said next is exactly what I think we would have said. Peter looks over at James and he says, Who is this man? Right? Who is this guy? Did you just see what happened? Nobody goes around and says to the elements, Peace be still and everything stops. He just did. Who is this guy? And Jesus didn't do it to show off. There's nothing after that. It's just what happened. And that's their reaction. 